This is Paul McGann, and you're listening to the Five Ish Fangirls Podcast. The tenth squeak to new, all the way to episode. 314 of the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. And once again, we are going to add to your to watch, to read, to listen pile. We are not sorry. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like I do with the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany and Hoth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. Was hot last week. Now it's, we're actually getting spring. <laughs> this is Holly from Wisconsin. No longer hot. We're out of the negatives and into the 30s. Yay! Woo! Gonna start wearing shorts? Yeah. <laughs> uh, not quite. I draw the line. Shorts don't come out till 65, 70. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and and this is Rachel in a slowly melting Indianapolis, Indiana. It was forty two degrees when I got home last night, but it was not nice. that hot one today, and the sun was not out as much as yeah. I would have liked. But we're headed in the right direction, which is good. yay. I'll take we're, it. We're, we're heading out of the freezer. <laughs> yes. That's always a good feeling. Yeah, but like, right? you know, that foot of snow we got a week ago, there's still a lot Ooh. of it on the ground because it's taking yeah. forever to melt. And now, like, the ground is just a soggy mess. So, uh, gotta keep it well. I don't even know how much I have right now. <laughs> like, I yeah, Brittany got that. hammered. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for living on the East Coast. <laughs> so, it's like in the East Coast and high. Ele- elevation Whew. that too that that makes a difference yeah yes it does this is why i will never live in that part of the country sorry <laughs> i'll come visit but i ain't living there <laughs> you got some beautiful locations uh in the you know east coast new england area but <laughs> not enough for me to live there sorry no, the the, win- <laughs> the winters aren't worth it, and I'm saying that as living at the base of a mountain, where it, it actually it, we get more snow than the valley does because we're up a little higher than everybody yep. else. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just I'll stick with the Indiana winters <laughs> for better or for worse. <laughs> I'd rather not have those either, but if I have yeah. to choose. I'll stay here. Thank you. <laughs> so, well, that's been the weather report. So let's move on. <laughs> Wait, you know, we have, to have, we, have, we have our 10 o'clock news segment sometimes. Now we have the weather. So yes. Weather. yes. <laughs> we got to keep everybody updated. Yes. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to the news. Not a whole lot of news. A couple of trailers have dropped including uh one that i did not even know this was in the works and i was very hesitant uh before i hit play to watch it because it when it came out it was all over the place as it was because mm-hmm. uh yeah. the history of translating video games into movies oh, yes. <laughs> is um not the best track record for how they, they they are and getting better was- yes yeah but the last time they adapted this, it did not go over well. <laughs> no, nope, no, not at all. Uh, Christopher Lambert as Raiden. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's but, better you know, if you're a child of a certain age and you ever went to you know your local bowling alley or whatever that had you know any sort of like arcade, you could almost always find a Mortal Kombat. Uh, arcade machine and even i who i don't consider myself a video game player remember playing and having my favorites uh <laughs> to play Same uh, here always trying to get the right button combination to get you know the really gory fatalities yeah, uh-huh. the special moves because those are yeah you know, the mm-hmm. most fun uh so uh, yeah. so yeah uh, uh, the more blood, the better. <laughs> yeah, but apparently this is going to be coming out on Netflix. Hmm. Um, 
but yeah, they're do they're going to attempt another Mortal Kombat. This seems to kind of have a plot, maybe, kind of, sort of. Um, Tilt your head one way and look. Yeah, uh, you got some very recognizable characters, uh, some very recognizable costumes, and I was like, okay, it, the trailer that I watched was the Red Band trailer. So I mean, it's Mortal Kombat. It's mm-hmm. it's gory. You know, yeah. we're talking Game of Thrones gory mm-hmm. here. Yeah. yeah, and if I if I remember right, um, one of the biggest complaints of the the movie they made, the Mortal Kombat movie they made so many years ago was that it was like pg or pg 13 and everyone was like you can't have a mortal Kombat movie without the blood and getting guts and everything yeah 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 so you know i'm watching this trailer and i'm like okay okay this is this seems like it might be passable you know whatever it like they focus on sub-zero quite a bit in the trailer um and then we got uh they get just a little bit of scorpion versus sub zero and the minute scorpion's like get over here i'm like okay i'm good (laughs) you had me at get over here (laughs) but my my two dogs know that one very well it's like uh, uh, she's channeling that game we better get over to her not that i'd hurt them but it's just like you're trying my patience yeah how many times have you, you know, like, a person, a thing, like the remote controls on the other side of the room? I mean, you know, now we got Harry Potter and we all wish we had wands, but, yeah. <laughs> but you know, for a time there, we were just like, can I just shoot a thing and be like, get over here, you know? Right? <laughs> that would be so convenient. It would be. So, you know, again, we'll have to wait and see till the entire thing is released and see just how well it does but mm-hmm. you know it's like hey this is the thing so mm-hmm. that's good it's like don't forget your roots mortal Kombat. That, don't forget your roots that's the important thing yep and, i wonder and, what and, kind of background music we're gonna get <laughs> yeah. i don't know yes and and bear in mind those who are are not in the know don't confuse mortal Kombat with street fighter no there is, yeah. there, there, is an article, there was an article that was floating around that was complaining that chun li wasn't in the movie and it's like uh she's not in mortal Kombat. she's a street fighter yeah i'm Wrong pretty sure jean claude van damme is not going to appear, appear anywhere in this movie no so yeah. nor, nor is raul julia much to our sadness yeah yeah <laughs> but but yeah there uh jezebel was 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 kvetching about that and i'm just like do you even know what you're writing about? Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> so, but no, it looks it, it looks like a good time. Yeah. If if nothing else, at least it will be entertaining. Yeah. Well, and in other, this is either going to be a train wreck or this could be really entertaining. Oh, uh, yeah. Trailer. Uh, and just you know, mirror what weeks after we talked about 101 Dalmatians and the fact that yeah. we're getting a movie about Cruella we got our first look at it with Cruella oh, with Emma gosh. Stone as Cruella I, I was getting some like Joker Penguin Batman vibes when I was watching this trailer with mm-hmm. you know with the darkness and yeah. some of the weight and it's like mm, I don't know I, I, this is this is kind of my thing, and I, I know people have have had their opinions about this. And and you know, we mentioned this when we talked about 101 Dalmatians so many weeks ago. Cruella's whole shtick is mm-hmm. she wants to kill puppies and make them into a coat. Uh-huh. How do you make that villain sympathetic? I'm not seeing it. But, but it, it, it very much feels like that they're trying to make her like, oh, she's just a misunderstood kind of, you know, a Harley Quinn Joker. I mean, a lot of people have made that. I think what they did with Mal- uh, Maleficent. Maleficent, yeah, which I just, I'm not a fan of because I'm like, can't she just be evil and be evil for being evil's sake? Like, that she doesn't need to have an, a, a, an, apolo- a, 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 yeah, an apologetic coming on and saying oh but there, she was justified in in doing that and you know maleficent's one thing because she's a, a, a wicked evil sorceress from a fairy tale Cruella wanted to kill puppies mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah that, lines uh, drawn in sand yes 
Yeah, and, like, and they even they even kind of nod that in the trailer with those those Dalmatians that you know, at the party and they're growling at her. And I'm just they like, know, they know, they know, <laughs> they know, they know. And she she may not have even had the idea yet, but the Dalmatians they know, they know exactly what what this woman is about, and they want no part of her. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll see. I do not have high hopes, but. We'll see. It, it could end up being like Maleficent, where, you know, at the end of the day, she still becomes the, the evil mm-hmm. being that we all come to know and some people love. And you could still know her backstory and be like, oh, yeah, she had a crappy childhood or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like, oh, she's still evil. So Yes. Who knows? It's like, it's like yeah, you, you, you had a, ch- a crappy childhood. That doesn't excuse the bad things you did. Yeah, or will do, or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'm. I guess it depends I'm, on how they play it. So yeah, it, it's hard to tell from the trailer. Other, you know, it looks fabulous. It looks like Emma Stone had a lot mm-hmm. of fun filming this and mm-hmm. channeling her inner Coella, and the costumes are like oh, <laughs> like oh, the cosplay possibilities. Dang you, Disney. I don't need any more projects. <laughs> uh, speaking speaking of t- a bit of a tangent. So I, I was at work today and uh, one of the other librarians was they were you know, going through the collection, seeing like what books need to be taken out, what needs to be replaced, um, you know, just kind of weeding through everything. And we found one that was like how to do your hair like a Disney villain. No. <laughs> and, and, they, and Cruella's in there and it full out like you do the you do the half black half white thing you do all this you know and then there's there's like one for Captain Hook like you can do braid dreadlocks you can do your hair up in a in horns for Maleficent and I was like oh wow that one that's something else yeah. <laughs> and I'm like you know <laughs> they're saying it's pretty popular and so they're probably gonna order another one so you know what Cos- cosplay possibilities there you go I wish I could remember the name of it. I'd tell, I'd, I'd, I'd put it out there. So, like, if you, if you really want to know how to do your hair, so you look like a Disney villain, here it is. But yeah, it's basically like Disney villain hairstyles. You could find it if you search, yeah, Amazon, Google, whatever. Yeah. Well, fun. Yeah. Uh, so that's it really for Zenus um other than um uh again I am <laughs> podcasting away this entire month it's been kind of crazy um so um my uh next appearance on the Brandon Peter show uh, old space show for our episode about attack of the cybermen is now um available in the feeds for you um so that was uh, an interesting co- uh, conversation considering uh you know just how you know uh bagged on um uh, the twin dilemma was and then you know <laughs> you get the second story and it's like oh this is great you know <laughs> so <laughs> it's like what happened <laughs> uh, so that was uh, an interesting um an interesting discussion fun to talk about the cybermen good classic you know villain um and then um Part three of the Trial of the Time Lord is now available through on uh, Next Stop Everywhere, Doctor Who podcast. Uh, so Terror of the Vervoids. So we get the not so introduction to Mel. <laughs> it's more like, oh, look, new companion. Like, there she is. is. Yay. Um, and it's, uh, again, an interesting uh, discussion. <laughs> um, so, um, and then, uh, of course, uh, latest episode of Gold Standard is out on the feeds where we talk about The Lost Weekend, um, which is uh, the best picture winner for 1945. 
so um, in, in interesting film. <laughs> we'll just like leave it at that. Yeah, I mean, they have to be at least somewhat interesting for them to even get nominated, I would like to think, let alone win. Um, wasn't my favorite. You'll just have to listen to the episode to find out why. I, I would, you know what, through <laughs> all this, I would, I would really be curious to know what is going to be your favorite, ultimately. <laughs> um... Good question. You mean like the movie that I get the that gets the highest rating from me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you guys are still going through all of them, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to have your answer right now. But I'm just, you know, going through all this and like you, you really haven't found one that you're like, oh, I love this one. I, you know, really excited, or even just, yeah, you know, that you enjoyed it, or you know, I've had some that I genuinely enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't think I've rated any any of the actual best picture winners um i don't think i've rated anything higher than like an eight um now some of the uh patreon mm -hmm. i've rated very high <laughs> but yeah well, none of the actual best picture yeah. winners i've yet to rate really high quite yet there is one that i know of that will get a high rating from me just because it is one of my favorite movies of all time um and love it as my husband sets out the fire alarm <laughs> chauncey stop cooking yeah really <laughs> we don't need you burning down just to cook dinner not burn it <laughs> okay well i i just must i have bacon <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely not if it's bacon don't burn the bacon <laughs> But we will not get to that one for quite a while, if that gives you an idea. So, oh boy! Yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna be one that we're going to get to for quite a while. So you just have okay. to wait. And all right, if anything else gets you know tugs at the Russian judge's heartstrings. <laughs> no, I mean, you know. We, we we've discussed this about how how you know awards awards are kind of like it's it's a compromise it's not really anyone's mm -hmm. favorite and it's just kind of like eh all right yeah but you know I, I, yeah I would I would think especially you guys I don't know about the rest of our well I know Chauncey would uh, just look at the list of best picture winners and knowing what we like and I like you could probably figure it out yeah so yeah I'm, I have a feeling I know what what you're talking about which one yeah. Yep. so there is that so those are all available wherever you can get podcasts all, all three of those and if you're not subscribed to any of them why not please do so mm -hmm. i'm not just saying that because you know i'm on them <laughs> <laughs> they're all good shows all mm -hmm. <laughs> yes they are uh so there is that uh so moving on to the feedback we've got some feedback from shalane um and um she says uh muppet treasure island um she says that her favorite songs are cabin fever professional pilots pirate pilot pirate <laughs> ships not planes uh sailing for adventure <laughs> and something better and um i did not know this uh but there's an extended version of cabin fever if the song wasn't long enough um uh, <laughs> that's on the soundtrack it's probably one of those that they kept kept on writing because they kept coming up with with goofy ideas for it yeah <laughs> yeah so if you go and listen to the soundtrack uh there is uh even more cabin fever <laughs> to be found um and then some of her favorite parts are uh when dead tom is dead <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call him Dead Tom. Yeah. It's like, you mm -hmm. killed Dead Tom. I was like, he was already dead. That's why we called him Dead Tom. <laughs> uh, when um, when Billy Bones dies and Rizzo's like, 
he died. This is supposed to be a kids, a kids movie. movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. A lot, lot, lot of, a lot of death in her favorite quotes. <sighs> yeah. Um. Let's see. She says, um. She wonders if there might be more movies based on classic novels starring the Muppets in the future. And she suggests things like uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, <laughs> Taming of the Shrew, Pride and Prejudice. That would be very interesting. Uh, Moby Dick, Tom I Sawyer, and Huck Finn. <laughs> now I need to see Piggy and, and Kermit as, as Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need this in my life as ridiculous as it must be I, you know what i've or, seen i've or, seen other people like call for that on social media like recently or, too or a muppet's version of much ado about nothing yeah that would be i would watch more shakespeare if it was done by the muppets that's all i'm saying you know that that is a whole series of movies that they could do because I, mean, I can't they, stand yeah, Shakespeare like, usually, but I would do it if it's Muppets. By the Shan girls, yeah. <laughs> as long as we can it's visit the, the set, we'll, we'll yes we'll the magic. We, we won't we won't tattle, but ooh, that'd be fun. That, that'd uh, be fun. Like now we're gonna have to like cast each Muppet. Like which Muppet would be this? <laughs> Maybe we should do an episode where we do that. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Well, I, like, I like that. It's like if if if, uh, if Disney or whoever won't won't pitch it, well, by golly, we will. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this could work, you guys. This totally could work. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, she also <laughs> mentions how much your family, Chrissy, loves the Muppets, the TV show. Well, and how you're passing it on to the next generation as you mentioned you've been showing it, pup, the yeah. Muppet stuff to, to Alex so. yes well I, I will I will say this because the 17th was my parents anniversary um, they didn't go anywhere because my mom broke her kneecap several weeks ago Ooh. she's Ooh. doing better she's in the, uh, yeah it's not been fun but she hasn't been able to go anywhere so they just you know we're home chilling and that day like my dad called just to you know say hey what's going on and he's like yeah they're watching watching Muppet Treasure Island it's not quite my speed <laughs> and I'm like okay but yeah my my dad likes uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol and that's really it for Muppet stuff that, that he's into I, I think he might have watched some of the Muppet show back in the day but I don't think it was really his his thing well it's on Disney plus now that is true yes that it is, is true so you can watch it um and then <laughs> her I her... just hope they release the frog prince one of these days on yeah. Disney Plus. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then her uh last little co- her last comment uh that we will mention because I was talking about how I got to see Kermit the Frog in action at Disney World. Um, but that was the day that Justin Bieber was there. She says, I also hate Justin Bieber. Uh, <laughs> I knew I liked you, Shalane. Uh, so in solidarity in our dislike for Justin Bieber so yes it, it's it's not a it, you can it's, see that it's not a hard it's, yeah it's not a hard um opinion to hold yeah yeah and True. she says she thinks she may have seen some of the Muppets in action when she's been to Disney and that is the case they do have the Muppets they have the Muppet Vision 3D at Disney's Hollywood Studios um which most of it is a 3D movie, but uh, Statler and Waldorf and Sweetums uh, appear oh, in person. Um, yeah, in that because it's a, it's 4D is what it is. So you know, yeah. Uh, so they got to have actual there, and there's an orchestra of penguins too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I think they had it at, um, at California Adventure so many years ago. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. there when when we went, and yeah. I've and then been twice. Yeah. And then for a while there, they had um, some of the Muppets telling uh, um, uh, stories of the early years. It was in Liberty Square, right next to the Hall of Presidents. Um, They had the Muppets do like history. Mm -hmm. uh, But of course, 
is the Muppets, so they don't necessarily tell the stories exactly historically accurate. <laughs> they tell like the story of like Paul Revere's Midnight Ride, uh, that sort of thing. So you can see the Muppets. Now happen. I'm picturing Muppets in Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. And the last time we were there, they also had the Muppet Mobile Lab, which was this right around machine with uh, a beaker and uh, honeydew, Bunsen honeydew, um, trying to do science experiments for the people out and about in the parks, which was really cool to see, you know, this kind of weird contraption that Dr. Bunsen honeydew had built and <laughs> riding around with it with beaker. And, you know, of course, with the, any experiments that go wrong and beaker's usually the victim of said Yes. Experiment gone wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> poor Beaker. Oh, Beaker. Mm -hmm. He's such a he's such a good sport. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the thing is, he's kind of like R2D2. He could be like telling, you know, like cursing us off. We have no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. Win-win. <laughs> we get amusement at uh, his uh accidents <laughs> and he gets he gets to uh to um work off some steam with yes his, uh... and nobody's offended because you can't understand what he's saying yep <laughs> poor beaker uh -huh. we love you beaker yep yes we do <laughs> yep well just like the sweetest chef <laughs> yeah <laughs> You feed yes. me zooky dooky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sweetest chef occasionally you get a word you understand. So yeah. Yeah. hope it's not a bad word. Yeah. 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 Oh, goodness. <laughs> I love the sweetest chef. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Shalane, for your feedback. As always. So. You know we love reading, but sometimes it's hard to find time to physically sit down with a book, which is why the Five-ish Fangirls has proudly partnered with Audible. Audible is a leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs. Whatever makes you squee, there's a perfect listen for you. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible Originals. Whether you're adventuring through time and space, running from dinosaurs, or capturing ghosts, with the free app, audiobooks go where you go. You can download titles and listen offline, anytime, anywhere. Even if you switch devices, you'll never lose your place. And right now, Five-ish Fangirls listeners can sign up for a free 30-day trial by going to audibletrial.com slash fiveishfangirls. That's 30 days to check out not only their huge collection of audiobooks, but also podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. So continue the joy of reading with Audible. Don't see a title that trips your trigger one month? No problem! Your credit will roll over to the next month, and you can quit anytime and keep the books you've acquired forever. For more details and to sign up for your free 30-day trial, visit audibletrial.com slash fiveishfangirls. That's audibletrial.com slash fiveishfangirls. And now, back to the podcast. Indeed. Moving on to this week's main topic, we're going to go back um and take a look at we have not done this since late september so it's been a while uh take a look at uh what we've all been using to entertain ourselves when we're not at work or doing this uh, <laughs> eventually uh so uh again we're probably gonna end up adding to uh not only each other's but others you know, to watch list, to read list, and uh, we're not sorry <laughs> at all. Why oh, life just does that. so so so? Don't blame us when you're like, I don't know what to do anymore. It's yeah, too much. yeah. Just it just happens. Like, I want to watch something, but I don't know what. Here you go. Yeah, you got suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, although in this case, we're gonna start with reading. So. <laughs> <laughs> And reading in this case includes both books 
and audiobooks, I guess. Yes. So there's some overlap because there's a listening to category too, mm -hmm. but uh -huh. in my case, I consider audiobooks still reading. So yes, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. coming from the resident librarian, when we do like our our summer reading and all those kinds of things, we say yeah, read listening to audiobooks that counts as reading. Yes, because uh -huh. a lot of people when when we have it, they want to sign up. They're like, but I I don't read, I listen. I'm like, well, okay, then that works. You can sign mm -hmm. up, and that counts. So yes. And I will, I will beat that that dead horse until it's pulp. Well, as the resident librarian, do you want to start? Uh, sure. Um, so the funny thing about um, being a librarian and starting actually working uh, um, a steady job at a library, not that I haven't been, but you know, now I have one place where I work all the time. You don't actually have time to read what you want. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to do you have to um, do research for your programs and I am um, so our, our so I've I've been doing a lot of audiobooks which I will guess I will say for listening to well no I can do I've been I've got two series I've been listening to so I'll do one here and do the other one here but the other thing I've been doing is um, reading for um, we, we have a we have a program um that we do it's called great reads it's for like kids 8 to 11 with an adult um and so and every branch no, when things are normal every branch does one they pick a book every month and then they have like a book club around this, this book and it's usually like a middle grade book well since well since corona chan came and decided to disrupt our lives we've been doing it all virtually so it's the entire system so each branch only has to do it one month out of the year and our month is going to be may and the librarian who has planned it uh she's actually going out on maternity leave so since i'm the newbie i'm going to pitch pitch it for her so that is a long and involved way of saying i've been reading this graphic novel called catherine's war and it is for like i said it's like um eight you know ages eight to eleven and it's actually translated from french um, I have, I should have got this out before I, uh, started, but it is about a girl who is, who lives in France and she loves photography. Um, and she's at this, it's in 1942. It's actually a, a true story. Um, so, so, you know, she's at this, at this children's home that they have a school and so she, she decided she loves photography, but then, you know, uh, you know, France, 1942, the Nazis come a calling and it doesn't end well for France and initially and she has to go on the run because uh she is Jewish I I, I think she, yeah but yeah so she had to has to leave and uh go into hiding she has to change her name um but she takes a lot of pictures a lot you know she takes all kinds of pictures when she's on the run and so the book actually has some of her photos. Um, they actually, the, the, this children's home actually has a gallery of, of pictures that she took. Um, and it's just like, it's kind of a, an interesting uh, picture biography that gallery is of, you know, all the things that she, that she went through, that she saw. Like, I mean, there's stuff, there's like normal stuff, like going to school and the, you know, the, the nuns at the school. Um, and you know when they're when you know they're serving dinner or the teachers but then there's also a picture that she took of a, a doll laying in some broken glass after you know something horrible happened um but you know it's it so you know it, it the the trick is you know you have to make this interesting to kids not too scary because you know you're still dealing with with young kids but still impressing on them like what happened in history um and you know what you know all these things all these things that happen but you know put a human face on it basically so it's called Catherine's War uh, by Julia Billet and Claire Favelle um, they're French I, let's see hold on a minute yeah so they're they're so they're, they were both French so it was and it was translated into English I don't know how long ago um, they originally uh, originally uh, came out in 2017 but it was uh, English translation came out last year so uh, so far I am enjoying it as much as you can enjoy a, a book about 
you know, so a, a, a child uh, hiding out during World War II and, and the Holocaust and Nazis and all that stuff. But, you know, it, one thing one thing you, you, you quickly learn about children's historical fi- fiction, there are a ton of books that take place during World War II, both fictional and uh-huh. based on a true story like this one. So, mm-hmm. But no, it's, it's a good one. And it's a graphic novel, just- so media in general they do that is world true. war ii over any other yes. war that yes. is true yes yeah it, it's kind of uh, it's i guess it's just really fascinating to people but anyway so there's that book um that i'm actually reading for work but um and then the one then then one of the audiobook series i've been listening to uh is so i do i do like romance novels by the way <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk a lot about a lot about them because there's not a whole lot to talk about. It's sort of my you've mentioned it a few times. Yes, yeah. but it's like it's like I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of you know why did they choose this because you know, or why why did the author do this in this story and here's this theory about these characters. It's a one and done and it's fun. It's fluffy. I enjoy it. So I did watch the um, the Bridgerton series on Netflix when it when it came out uh, in December. I did enjoy it, although the books are better. Um, and there are some very interesting choices. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, there are some very interesting choices in the series that I'm like, I don't know why you did that. Uh, especially when it comes to the the older brothers who are like, oh, you're not as <sighs> you're not the way I expected you to be. You're kind of bland. But that's neither here nor there. So I've been going back and listening to the audiobooks of the the, the Bridgerton series. And they're very clever, very fun, and it's just, yeah, I just, I just, because I, I, I read them initially several years ago, then they announced they were going to, Netflix was going to do the series, and then, you know, uh, you know, shocker, the, the hold list at the library is a million miles long. <laughs> I wonder why. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in fact, today, I, I we got some new copies of the first book in, and this book's been out for, you know, 20 years or so. But everyone wants to wants to read it. All spoken for, I'm assuming. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I've been I'm on to book. Okay, I've lost count because there's eight siblings in this family, and each sibling gets their own book. Um, um, but yeah, I think I'm on six. I'm on Francesca. That's that's one of the younger sisters, and you know the the siblings are all named A to G. <laughs> So there's Anthony, Benedict, Colin, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, Hyacinth. No, Gregory, then Hyacinth. And so, you know, and it's, I don't know, it, it, in romance, you kind of um, don't, you don't expect historical accuracy. Like, do not, if you're going to, to read historical romance, you don't go in there. I mean, they, they get some things right, but a lot of it is, um, you know, modern people in in fancy dress and who right. time traveled somehow um but you know you you read it for the characters you read it for for fun and enjoyment and you know i'm not one of these people who's like oh how dare you disparage historical romance how dare you do this it's it actually is so smart and i'm like mm, i wouldn't call it smart <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's fun and i'm like there is nothing wrong with fun and you know what you are always guaranteed a happy ending if there's not a happy ending it's not a romance and honestly these days especially you know media you know getting into the dark nitty gritty anti-hero you know negative you know head you know just just really bad awful things like nobody gets a happy ending it's like you know what i could i could do with some fluff so this is what i so this is what i've been reading so anyway, Bridgerton, the the Netflix series is good. It is fine. The books are better. So if you can either read them or listen to them, the audio the audio narrator is she's she's wonderful. The, the lady they have that that reads them is is fantastic. So you can't go wrong either way. If you if that's if if you're interested. If you want to know what all the kerfuffle is about and everybody going nuts for this new Netflix series, which it has gotten picked up for a second season and I'm 
pretty excited about that. I my, well, with that many children, they're you know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, my and my favorite of the of the stories is the is uh, Benedict's book because it's actually a little kind of a riff on Cinderella. Oh, <laughs> nice. Because um, the, the heroine Sophie, um, she. You know, she she's you know the 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 unwanted the, the stepdaughter of the previous earl or or I can't remember it wasn't an earl it was some some nobility and her her stepmother absolutely hates her and the father dies you know it it is basically beat for beat Cinderella and you know and then she the the servants help her um go to this go to this ball that that uh, Lady Bridgerton is 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 hosting so she goes and it's a masquerade so you know. It doesn't matter if her clothes aren't the 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 latest and greatest, and then she can wear a mask and she she dances with Benedict. He falls for her, but she has to leave, and but the, but then from there the stepmother kicks her out, and Benedict is like, you know, he doesn't know where she went, and he refuses to marry anyone else because he can never find his mystery woman, and she ends up working for his family because they because the the stepmother kicked her out. And so she ends up being a lady's maid to, to his sisters, and she is terrified that he that he is going to find her or is going to find out who she is. And so it's just, like I said, it's Cinderella, almost yeah. beat for beat. So that one's my favorite, and I'm like, please don't screw that one up. That one's actually the third book in the series, so hopefully they get it right when they get to that in the show. So that's what I've been reading. Um, I guess I can go next. I've got a couple, so um, I've actually been going back and rereading a mystery cozy series that's set up in the north woods of my, my home state, Wisconsin. They're called the Loon Lake Mysteries by Victoria Houston. It's about this old retired dentist who likes to fish and he winds up getting pulled in to help the local sheriff solve some cases and you've got you know some of your local color and character and they're actually pretty good and, and she, there's 19 books and she is actually oh, doing goodness. yeah and she's actually doing a spinoff with the police chief and and the, and the the book's titled going to be titled The Wolf Moon, and that's coming out in early summer of 2021. So I better get cracking on my reread. <laughs> and the other series that I'm reading, I'm playing catch up, is the In Depth series by J.D. Robb. It's a police procedural set in the future with a touch of romance and some crime solving. So <laughs> both are very good. Yeah, that is one series. I like. I pass it in the library. I'm like, oh, I'd love to have time to read that one. There's like, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're up to like 52, 53 books, and I'm on like 44, 45. So, yeah, I yeah, but the Dresden Files was large. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, and I've yeah. read, I've read some some Nora Roberts, and you know, that's her, you know. Mm -hmm. her, her, her That's who Jady Rob is. Yes. Yeah. So I and, and I've read like female her, characters. <laughs> yes. You know, and I, and I so I've read her um, some of her more like romantic fantasy type stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't I haven't got to the Jady Rob stuff because I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. I start off with book one and then go from there. <laughs> All right. I think I have one of those books somewhere. Now, is it something that you can start like in the middle or do you have to you can you can kind of start in the middle and backtrack because they do give you kind of enough filler mm -hmm. if they bring something up from a previous case that you can actually kind of go back and search the wiki to find out which book the events actually kind of happened in so i mean you could basically pretty much pick up wherever you'd like Mm -hmm. and then go back okay. so I mean you don't necessarily have to start with one per se but if you want to see kind of how the romance builds and how the two main characters kind of get together then okay. <laughs> start with book one but you can hop basically you can hop in wherever 
because that's kind of what I, happened to me when I started JD Rob was like my sophomore, junior year of college. And this is when she would put out the new in-depth books in paperback and not do hardcover. And I was seeing a lot of my girlfriends, you know, mm-hmm. reading them. I'm just like, hmm, what's this about? Pick up the first couple. I mean, this was like when there was only like 10 or 12 books in the series. <laughs> yeah, so, so ca- catching up wouldn't have been too hard. No, catching up back then was real easy. <laughs> So I'm just like, ooh, okay, I, I'm liking this. All right, sweet. I mean, she's dealing with a candy thief and it, and vending machines that are robotic that will not give her a tube of Pepsi. <laughs> and she threatens violence. I mean, along with solving crime and her husband, who pretty much basically is a rich guy who runs pretty much everything. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it, it's it's fun, <laughs> and some of the cases do get a little, a little gruesome and gory, but not nothing too horrible. They do leave some stuff to the imagination. <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you know check the library and if. I mean, and I think every single one's been in audio, and I think there's different versions out where there's the abridged and unabridged. So mm-hmm. take your pick. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, since I'm in between, uh, well, we'll get to that when I get to the anticipation part <laughs> so <laughs> what i'm reading right now um i guess is kind of a uh a, uh behind the scenes on what we have coming down the pipeline for the podcast because uh, i'm in the middle of a physical book and an audio book uh the physical book is disney war um by <clears throat> james b stewart um he is a um, journalist, um, but it is um, it is a yeah. He used to be an editor at the Wall Street Journal, <clears throat> and now he uh, well, at least it's when this book was printed, he was uh, contributing to the New Yorker. Um, but it is all about the Eisner era <laughs> at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew this was coming yeah <laughs> and it is a big book <laughs> this is a big book this is just like the wonder woman book that i was trying to work my way through that's over 500 pages long um so it is a big dense book that i am slowly making my way through um <clears throat> and then um audio wise uh, I am listening to um, via Hoopla, courtesy of my library, um, is uh, Working Together, which is one of Michael Eisner's books, read by Michael Eisner. So, <clears throat> so right now, as far as reading is concerned, I've got Michael Eisner on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> He's everywhere, whether I want him to be or not. So, hint, hint, wink, wink. If you want to do a little pre-reading. Coming down the pipeline for the podcast. Uh Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And because both of those books are huge, I'm not trying to take on anything else in the moment. Don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah, the audio, the Eisner one. I saw the page count on the Disney War. It's like... Ooh, yeah. baby. Yeah. Doorstep. Well, in the in the one <laughs> written by Eisner, even in audio form, it's seven hours. Ooh. So, Ooh. yeah. Well, that so, definitely... coming down the pipeline, but not like next week. <laughs> <laughs> not Johnny Five. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. More input. Yes. <laughs> I'm not like that. So, 
That's what I'm reading at the moment. For me, I actually had a small pile of to read that I was going to read in the future, but due to moving and like where I moved to and all that stuff, I oh some stuff is with my grandparents, and I've been able to get down to get those books. So I haven't been able to read by those books. And I didn't want to start anything new um, until I got them. So not surprised. I'm reading fan fiction a lot again. <laughs> Any good ones? Um, I've been like in a very heavy Harry Potter mood. Like I've been reading a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction, cool. mainly like like stuff um like the Mar- Marauders era. I don't okay. know why that got suddenly like boom. So I, like I've been reading that with those like the past I don't know how many weeks now. There's some good ones and like. I like reading like like kind of alternate universes where um, Harry end up like living with Sirius. Mm-hmm. So those have been fun. Okay. And then like I said I've had started listening to um, Sandman, but I haven't had a chance to get far into it. So I'm like still like within like the first couple of minutes I'm probably not even a half hour in <laughs> yeah. so I have to go back to that and probably start from the beginning yeah our apologies to Neil Gaiman we are very excited about this adaptation of the Sandman it's, it's just... just so much it's a lot mm-hmm. sorry it's a lot to it's like the first... oh. mm-hmm. yeah and it's like the first part of like how many parts are supposed to be? A oh, lot. A said. lot. It's a <laughs> lot. Yeah. I will get it done eventually. I promise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In your oh, don't own time. I don't think Neil Gaiman is going to be showing up at your doorstep anytime soon. Going, why haven't you finished it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why, I, why I made I him sound Russian and him. not British? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I definitely won't mind him coming knocking at my door. Well, that's true. <laughs> yes. It's like, he you knows people. Sign my copy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, moving on from uh, reading to watching. So, what is everybody probably binging <laughs> these days? <laughs> Well, um, I don't know that we're actually binging it, but uh, I, you know, since since Jared and I got married, and I, you know, I've told him like I have not seen all of the Star Trek movies other than Wrath of Khan, and he's like, we're gonna fix that someday. Well, someday has arrived, more or less. <laughs> um, so cool. we started with the motion picture, uh-huh. um, and, and you know, we're as 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 we are wont to do, we we are ranking them. Um, and I'm just uh-huh. like, and the, the whole time I was like, Gene, color is a thing. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Holy cow. So, I remember the kerfluffle when you posted that, and I knew you were, I mean, as soon as I read it, I was like, you're doing that sarcastically. I get yeah. it. <laughs> and everybody was like, it was the DC comment. universe before it was cool. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, guys, it's, I'm trying to be funny. You know, you're, you're, you're acting like I insulted your dog. It's Star Trek. <laughs> I know, Might as well I know. have insulted their grandmother. I know. I, I should have, I should have known better. I mean, I, I married, I married a, a, a big Trek fan. My, I grew up with a Trek fan. I, I understand fandom. I should have known better, but you know what, whatever. Um, so then we went to Rathacon and, you know, it was Rathacon. It's amazing. Um, and huh. You know, I, I mean, I'd search heard for the, Spock. Yeah, search for Spock. I'd heard the whole thing about the whole, oh, the odd numbered ones are terrible, and the even numbered ones are good. But honestly, I mean, the motion picture, all it is, is just an elongated episode. Like it could be a, uh-huh. it could be a, mm-hmm. good, a good episode. It's just they didn't yep. have enough to fill it out. And you know, there's a whole history behind that, and I won't go into it here. Um, uh, search for Spock was good it's just it kind of lagged in a few places and 
Yeah. And it ties into four. I mean, you kind of have to watch three and four almost together to really. Yeah. Which, which, which is basically what we did because we watched um, uh, the voyage home. Yeah, I was like, yeah, the voyage home. Yes, and you know that one's kind of a screwball comedy, and I enjoyed it. I it love got, it. Yeah, it, it was it was good. It was just I, I don't know. I'm like this this feels so weird. Like like Spock and everybody running around San Francisco. Although I I love the bit where you know they're looking for the the nuclear vessels. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and there's. <laughs> Like what does she say? Aren't they down in I can't remember the, the city or the Alameda? City. Yeah. Alameda. And you know, and she's apparently she was she wasn't even an extra. She was just somebody on the street and that was walking through where they were filming and um and Walter Keenig just didn't break character <laughs> when she said, Oh, they're down in Alameda. I mean, it, it's basically like a heist film. And yeah. the heist is trying to get the whales. <laughs> Yes. So so yeah, Voyage Home is is fun. It's a good one. I, I I did enjoy it and I had a good time watching it. And then you have Final Frontier. Yeah. Which, um, don't ever let Shatner direct. Uh-oh. Mostly because it. Uh, I, mean, I mean, these are just you know quick and dirty re- reviews. My my thoughts on it. Um, I mean, there are some good ideas, but then he would he would you know they'd have an idea, then they'd drop it, and then they'd have another good idea, and then they'd drop it, and. I, I think there's some good stuff in there. It's just a mess. So that's mm-hmm. the problem with five. Yep. Um, and then we get to Undiscovered Country, and I loved it. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, bear in mind, like I said, uh, before we started this little experiment, I had not seen any of the Star Trek movies that weren't the J.J. Abrams reboots other than Wrath of Khan, because everybody mm-hmm. talks of Wrath of Khan, and rightfully so. And I do, I do like original series Star Trek. What, uh, you know, what of it I have seen? I haven't seen a whole lot, and I keep meaning to fix that. Um, but, but what I've seen, I, I do, I love original series. And Undiscovered Country felt like they finally got the formula right. Everything that original series, what, what made it good, what made it fun and relatable, and why it's it's hung on so long in popularity. Undiscovered Country feels like the ultimate original series Star Trek movie. And I know that's blasphemy to say because everybody loves Wrath of Khan. I prefer Undiscovered Country. And you can all hate me and burn me at the stake all you want. But, dude, it was so much fun. And I loved it. I just... Now, quick refresh my memory. Five was the one with the Klingon murder plot, correct? Mm, or was that six? Five, five, five was the one is, why does God need a spaceship? Okay, six, six, right. yeah, six is the, the Klingon murder plot. Okay, so, so six I is only Christopher Reeve in it, or not Christopher Reeve, Christopher Lloyd. No, it... that one was three. Oh, God. three, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, You're so, so hard to keep track. I know, I know, Except for not, Ricardo like... Montab- I know Ricardo Montalban and his you know tan, yeah. slicked, yeah. muscled chest and abs are two, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, I just barely, I've just been watching them and I, I'm still getting confused. So, you know, diehard Star Trek fans, you know, hate me all you want. I don't care. My husband loves me, so shove it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, then, then we, then, you know, we have the next gen movies and Jared had to show me um, Q Who and Best of Both Worlds. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, Makes I, sense. Yeah, so so he showed me that before I watched First Contact. First Contact w- was great. I, I did like it. Although, I, the funny thing is, so like I said, my dad is a big Star Trek fan. But when I was a kid, and, 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 and we've discussed this, so I'm not, you know, bagging on him or anything. When I was a kid, I just, and he would watch Next Gen uh-huh. and an original series if it was, you know, on, on reruns and syndication. And I just kind of, when I was little, I assumed, oh, that's dad's thing. I'm not going to watch it with him just because I just had this thing, this thing in my mind that I didn't watch Star Trek with my dad. I just that I just didn't. I would watch like Westerns with him, like John Wayne movies with him. And that was fine. But, you know, Star Trek was just, oh, that's his thing. So I never really got into it. But I would catch it when he would watch like First Contact. I'd catch a, a thing here and there. And the other problem mm-hmm. is he channel surfs like nobody's business, which he can uh-huh. watch. He can watch TV that way. 
I can't. It's like I get into one thing and then it goes to commercial and he has to switch over to something else. I'm like, forget it. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea that first contact was the scenes with the Borg and the scenes with the, with the hippies in Montana. Yes. I never knew that was the same movie. I thought it it was two different movies. Rip roaring drunk. And and Zephram Cochran, hey, we got to have some music and it's Steppenwolf. Magic carpet ride. Yeah. Now, have you, did you see Generations before First Contact, or did you do oh, those? Oh wait, yeah, no, we did do we did do Generations. That's right. I skipped that one because um, yep. I'm like, wait, we've done another one. But yeah, we did Generations, and I re- I did like Generations. I kind of feel like they gave Kirk the shaft. Yeah. I'm like, Come I, on. I, have to agree. I mean, I mean, they're. I, 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 well, okay, I'd heard about the you know they dropped a bridge on him bit which yeah. i was like, I'm annoyed because i like kirk a lot but then uh-huh. again he, he he dies quote unquote uh-huh. saving the enterprise from from his point of, from his timeline point of view so in in reality he did get some kind of a heroic send-off uh-huh. i just wish it had kind of just stayed there but that's yeah. neither here nor there so uh-huh. anyway but yeah generations uh-huh. was was fun i just the, the, it, it was it was a little it was a little flabby in places, but not not too bad. Yeah, I have to say, out of all the next gen ones, first contacts, my favorite, <laughs> and uh, with my and my dad's too, because whenever it was on, he'd be like, "We're watching." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I did enjoy first contact and having that the the episodes, it you know, there as well. It's like, oh, this is why the Borg are scary. I mean. I knew what they were, you know, the collective, the, you know, you don't have your own mind, but, but actually seeing it in, in action in the movie and in the show, it's like, holy crap. Um, yeah. So yeah. Although I have now, now I think is it, it's insurrection. That's our next one. I think. Yeah. So. Now, now my mother-in-law is also a huge Trek fan. You know, this is where her, her sons got it. <laughs> and, you know, and Jared told her that was our next one when we, when we get it, when we, get a chance to watch it and she's like oh i love that one so I, i'm excited for that so i guess it you know anticipation that's my next that, that's uh-huh. what i'm anticipating when we can sit down to watch star trek insurrection because i've heard it's good um but that's where we are that's what that's our big what we've been watching thing oh and you know watching um mario games on youtube with alex but that's <laughs> that's not that's not hard <laughs> He loves Luigi. He goes, red Mario, green Luigi, pink Pete, green Yoshi. Aww. He is adorable. I love my son, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but yeah, we've been watching. We, he's been watching Mario games on YouTube. I, I will play, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm too tired. Here, go. Wa- let's just watch it on YouTube. But, and he loves it. So I'm like, sweet. <laughs> And it's very helpful when I have to, like, you know, go do laundry or some other chore. And, like, here, entertain yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what I've been watching. Uh, I have been, as I was saying with Kali before we started, so the last time we did this, I was binging uh supernatural so i was like oh yeah i was binging a a tv series that has 15 seasons guess what happened i went i'm now binging another tv series that have 15 seasons (laughs) i didn't even think about that all right yeah (laughs) so this case is even older i've been binging er (laughs) (sighs) and i'm about all the soon to be big star talent yeah it's been play- it's like been playing where's waldo it's hol- yeah. Yeah, it's wild some of the uh, faces that have popped up on the screen i mean obviously yeah, like you've got like the cast like everybody knows it's like oh george clooney got his start on er and, and you know all that fun stuff and you know Noah wiley i'm like oh he's gonna go on to do the librarians and stuff like that uh alex kingston it's like ah river song um you know ming not when it's like ah, she's so it's like she's so young <laughs> but at the same time she barely looks like she's aged mm-hmm so, um, but then, it, yeah, it's been fun to watch, like, uh, people come in for, like, guest spots for, like, a short stint, like, Mariska Hargitay 
uh, was in like a handful of episodes, like a year before she went uh, on to do Law and Order. Um, and like Sally Field the, comes in, you know, guest stars a, a few times uh, as one of the uh, nurses' mothers. Uh, uh-huh. And like Alan Alda had a stint, you know, as a as a doctor for a run and then there's like the occasional guest star or or like character actor that it's kind of like oh yeah i know that person because they're in like everything and they're (laughs) one of those faces um that they will pop in and then there's some people where it's like they got their like they were starting out acting like i've seen um jared paladecki and um you know at one point um in a completely different episode his you know future supernatural father <laughs> makes an appearance as well um uh, uh speaking of star trek a really really young i didn't recognize him because he's so young and still had some of the baby fat so he's kind of on the chubby side a little anton yelchin oh I was like, his face kind of looks looks familiar. Where do I know him from? And I looked, I'm like, oh, it's Anton. He he looked young in the post Star Trek too. To be fair, yeah, yeah, this this he's like nine, so he hasn't gone through puberty yet. So you know, he hasn't like you know grown up. He's still got the he's got a chubby face. It's like, oh, he's so cute. Uh, You know, it's just crazy, just how many like famous names have made their way you know on er in one form or another whether they're just there for like one scene or one or two scenes as you know as a patient or somebody yeah, gets focused on for several episodes or you know they become a reoccurring or they end up becoming a a regular so it's been it's been pretty wild was all our apps on er before going yes. over to hell Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, there's several house, future house alumni uh, <laughs> in this. So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 been pretty wild, and I'm only on season eight, so I've still got a lot more to go with faces and names and mm-hmm. stuff. IMDb has been my best friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> while, while watching this, so, uh, but it's been it's been pretty wild to 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 watch um i mean that's pretty much of him what i've been watching other than you know podcasting homework watching stuff for gold standard um and you know this show and heaven forbid twist my arm re-watching the six doctor run for my guest appearances <laughs> oh no oh no uh, <laughs> so yeah that's that's been fun and like i'm not really watching at least not live tv um uh because uh chauncey has absconded the living room half the time (laughs) um which is fine that's what hulu is for um and and disney plus of course so like i've been watching i've been keeping up with like prodigal son but i've been doing it like the day after on hulu um you know, same thing with things like Supermarket Sweep, you know, rewatch, you know, <laughs> watching it after the fact on Hulu. And then, of course, WandaVision, uh, which has been so good. So, so good. <laughs> so, yes, I have. Yeah, I have been watching on that will be forthcoming. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, I've been watching that one, too. But uh, that's we'll we'll discuss it when we get there. Yep. <laughs> Season's yeah. not over yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I feel like it is almost open. I'm sad about that, but there's so much more mm-hmm. to wait to see this year. Yep. Like Very last true. year, there's no nothing MCU. Yeah. This year, but we did have Agents of Shield. That is true. We had for a little bit of a year. <laughs> yeah, but once Agents of Shield end, we're all like. Not we're, all, we're all we're all like Oliver Twist. Year. Yeah, we're all like Oliver Twist watching, walking up to Kevin Feige going, please I want some more. Uh-huh. <laughs> we need these. He did he's delivering. Yes. We all getting yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What else you got? Oh, let's see. 
Well, what I'm watching, uh, well, like Rachel, I'm doing Prodigal Son. I'm binging um, the remastered. I'm just, I'm slowly starting, but um, HBO Go has the remastered Babylon 5. I've never seen it. I've heard a lot of my friends talk about it. And I mean, I heard about it when it first came out, but I just wasn't interested. And I'm just like, mm, I'll give it a go. And I've been enjoying it. So, and as for kind of recent stuff, um, sci fi's Resident Alien with Alan yes. has been fantastic so far and um for the forever fans if you're looking for something with our lead um ian grufford you might want to check out um harrow on hulu it's an australian mystery where he plays an me and there are they just started season three so didn't being Emmy would have been very good. Yes, yeah. So if you're, yeah, he was a uh, yeah, he was an Emmy in forever. Yeah, so it's like hmm, okay. But no, no immortality in Harold. So yeah. that's what <laughs> I've is been. it typecasting or well, that's what I've been watching. <laughs> both? Uh, probably yeah. both, maybe. I don't know. I guess I guess it's like writers writing what they know, actors act what they know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. <laughs> um, what I've been watching, I've also been watching Particle Sun and Resident Alien. Um, I haven't really been binging anything, but that's mainly because I can't decide. <laughs> I there's so many that I used to want to rewatch. That too. There's so many I want to rewatch or to watch for the first time. I'm like I can't this pin one down. I'm gonna have to like kind of do like what we do with uh, um um celebrities in a hat. I'm just gonna have to write all the shows I want to start, put them <laughs> in the back, and just take them take one out and watch it. Yes, <sighs> this is so much. There's so much streaming, I like I can't decide. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I haven't really been binging anything, and I haven't really watched any movies recently. So yeah. I, I, there's nothing necessarily well, wrong with that. No. Yep. If for anything, for your own mental health. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. There was. Well, the other day, um, I I was I heard somebody talking about a show that, that they would started watching, and uh, this this man was like, "Yeah, we started watching the shows. Like, I shouldn't have survived, or I shouldn't be alive, something like that." Um, and he was describing it like, you know, all these people that you know were in these accidents that where they where they should have died, and I'm like, that one, that sounds like that one would give me anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like, I think I'll mm-hmm. pass on that one. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, th- that falls in the category of not for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you're enjoying it, but I will, I will give it a pass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I've been watching. Um, fresh off his supernatural stint, I've been watching. Oh, um, Jer- Walker. Yeah. I- I haven't seen much of like the original one, so I don't know like I can't compare them, but I've been enjoying the the remake. Yeah. Cool. I've been enjoying that one too. It's kind of also oh hey, you were in Supernatural, you were in Supernatural and also the X Files. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All of the above. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes. All right. Well, our next uh, list is looking a bit forward. Uh, cute, the uh, Carly Simon anticipation. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
What are the things you are looking forward to? No, nobody's always. like, after last year, I'm not looking forward to anything. It'll probably get canceled. <laughs> it's like, I'm, really? I'm, I'm living in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Um, gosh, yeah, what else? <laughs> yeah, what, what, what am I anticipating? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, what movies are even coming out? Or uh, Black Widow. I kind of yeah, I would say yeah. right now. I think yeah. we're still on track for Black Widow. I think next month. <laughs> I, think, I hope. Yeah. Or did they get pushed back to May? Is it March or May? I thought it was March. Oh, where's that list? Wasn't it like a whole list of showing all like the MCU? Yeah. I am not sure. I, I thought it was I Oh no, sure May. Yeah, March you're right. I think it was March yeah. and then I think she got pushed again to May. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now IMDB has her for May 7th. So okay. which, you know, we'll be here before we know it. Oh uh, yeah. Until she gets moved again. God, I hope not. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't jinx it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been waiting for how long for this movie? Oh. I mean, so even before long. this thing was even announced, I've been wanting this movie. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has. We're like, come on, guys. What? What's mm -hmm. what's the hold up? Give yeah, yeah. us Natasha. <laughs> yes. Free Natasha. Free Natasha. Yeah, really. <laughs> seriously um yeah i am i'm racking my brain and i really can't think of anything i'm really really excited hyped up for i guess i guess season two of bridgerton <laughs> like i mentioned earlier um i mean there's some big finish stuff that i've pre-ordered like oh, yes. the, oh, yes. the last centurion the the yeah. one with with Rory uh, during his, his last centurion years guarding the Pandora. So there's that. I'm also looking forward to the um, Christopher Eccleston stuff. Yes, that That's one too. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Big Finish has some stuff that... Yeah. Yeah. If cool. anything else, we always have Big Finish that we are anticipating. <laughs> yes, because yeah. they've, they, they've figured out how to how to how to be pandemic proof mm -hmm. and and where mm -hmm. they where you can download your uh your purchases then you know yeah oh you're good unless you know if you really really want that physical cd which some people do that mm -hmm. that takes a little longer but you also get a download um yes nice. big finish mm -hmm. is not a sponsor but i will pimp them out whenever always <laughs> yes, yes. i will sing their praises because yep. they haven't steered me wrong yet. Nope. They're kind. They're kind of like a certain, uh, a certain snack chip. They just keep making more. Yes. Please, <laughs> and they're like, "Here you go." And so, uh, we will empty your wallet, and I'm happy to let them. <laughs> yes. I I know. I know the little tagline is "We love stories," but it really should be one. Once you big finish, you don't stop with something. I don't know. Once you yeah. once you pop once you pop the once CD you... in, you just can't stop. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. You can't you I'm can't have that just level taglines. You can't have just one. Wasn't that the, the Pringles? Yeah. yeah. Some, there, there was some potato sense. chip company or something. I was like, you can't yeah. have just or, one. Or or to paraphrase the um walking into Mordor mean you cannot just purchase one big finish. To one finish one audio. does not simply <laughs> <laughs> listen to one big finish audio. Yes, <laughs> or bye. Yeah. yeah, it's just you know, all through you know, through all the cancellations and the postponements and all this stuff, big finish has just kind of been trucking along. Just, I mean, there there was a little bit of a of a delay on a few of them, but they're like, nah, we got it. Yep. We got it. Mm -hmm. it's like, I got you. I think they've been practicing <laughs> that you know, the setups at people's mm. places for a while now. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we know people that work for Big Finish here in the States. They ha obviously have to work yeah. remotely. Yeah. Yeah. Do all their work yeah. via distance. So, yeah. It makes perfect sense. Yes, it does. So, 
So bless them for it and keep on keeping on, Big Finish, because mm-hmm. you're, yep. you're saving our sanity. They started doing the lockdown loads again, so yep. little yep. freebies every week. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so Thank yeah, you, big I, finish. <laughs> yeah yes. I've been anticipating those those offerings, and they're fun. Yeah, it's gonna be so good to hear Chris as the doctor again. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I've been living like the stories with um. Oh, who's who's done him in the big finish? I forgot. I haven't but- like the like the ones where it's not the doctor but like a companion does it and hasn't camille done some of them yeah yeah, yeah, the yeah. Companion and so has um why am i drawing a blank on his name the dalek dude who, who's pretty Nick, much Nick, the, nicholas Sprague. yes i mean he's he pretty much started big finish it's his thing yeah well but like he's done it he's done christopher eccleson for something yeah, he did quite, some when they did the uh, 50th anniversary. They yeah, did I think those, it was like um, the 50th stuff. Oh, and no, I can't remember what they were. Destiny of the Doctor. That's what yes. it was. Yes. Oh, sorry. And then, yeah, the yeah. Other, and then there's a guy um, who does a pretty good, who does a good um, 11th Doctor. Uh, is that Jacob Dudman, I think? Yes. Because yeah, John Colshaw does the third Doctor. Mm-hmm. Or no, Tim Trelord. Colshaw. I yeah. gotta look it up again. I keep forgetting. <laughs> anyway, there's oh somebody God, as, as well as like uh, like Nicholas Briggs has done has done it in the few other ones with it's they've done his stories. It's gonna be so nice having him back. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But, nah, it's gonna it's gonna be great. I should double check. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I have him on pre order, but. I, now I'm doubting myself. Yeah. <laughs> double check. I, double I, check. I, like the, I, like the, I like the fact now that when you log in, mm-hmm. it has the nice little circle of, you've got this. Yes. Coming through. Right? Instead of having to go to your library and then trying to yeah. remember when you placed the pre order. Yeah. Scroll through. Yes. I, I do. I do love that. Like, you've already got this. So I was like, cool. I don't have to buy it again. Or, you know. Yeah. Um, so no yeah so so yeah big finish definitely anticipating all those wonderful good things Mm -hmm. yep yeah well i know for uh three of us next month new season of the mass singer i was watching that um i guess it was over thanksgiving or something there was like the finale or close to the finale my sister was watching it and i'm like this is so goofy that it actually looks kind of fun. So yep. that's yeah. basically a good, good, good summary. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is ridiculous in the best way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I may have to, I may have to look into this. Yep. Yes. Wait a minute. Do it. Join us, Christy. Join, Join us. us. <laughs> let's, let's see. You've joined us on a few others. So, hey, come on in. The water. I, I, I might as yeah. well. I might as well. <laughs> um, and then another thing that I am anticipating that I alluded to when talking about what I'm reading is I had started the Dresden Files. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> had gotten the first two books uh-huh. and now I am in perpetual stasis <laughs> waiting for book, On book three. <laughs> oh boy. So, so I'm just like, you know, as I'm you know requesting other things from the library and, and uh, you know Rachel? Hoopla and overdrive and uh, you know as soon things. as you get book three put yourself on the waiting list for book four yeah you'll thank me yeah yes. I, and i have to do it one book at a time because i don't want to end up like getting like book like six before i get to it yes i want it in order so i can you know i'm only requesting that is the risk you run and i tell people that all the time when they're like oh i'm gonna put the whole series on hold it's like you do realize that everyone is going to have book one on hold, but you know, book seven doesn't have any holds on it. So book seven is the first one you're going to get just because that's how the hold system works. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. 
Yes, yeah, and I was you, well well aware of that. So I'm like, yes, oh, well, I'm yes. just gonna wait. But I I've been on hold for book three since like the start of the year. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that no that, way. Tends, that tends to happen when when there's a brand new one out. Everybody wants to read, you know, reread everything in order, which is fine. You're just gonna mm-hmm. be waiting a while. Yeah, yeah. It's like say, get, get, give a little leeway for us new folk. but yeah so yeah which yeah i guess is a good thing you know because it gives me plenty of time to focus on these two michael eisner books but at the same time it's like i just i never know when i'm gonna get that email saying congratulations book three of the dresden files is now available to download and i'm like so you better download it within the next two days and then you have three weeks to read it so Mm -hmm. we're gonna listen to it Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you wanna don't wanna you, sit you, on you can you can rejoin you can rejoin the adventures of Harry and Bob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I really need to stop that series. I uh, like. Yeah. Oh my gosh! It is so. And other people great. I know who read it are like I have to. I have to. I just it is haven't. so so. They are great. good. They're, they're I, they I, are really I, good. Rachel. I and, can't and wait until you meet it's, butters. It's <laughs> weird. The audiobooks, it's a bit weird because I'm so like I have listened to whole you know all these other audiobooks and it sounds like a person reading you a book, mm-hmm. whether it's fiction, mm-hmm. nonfiction, whatever. When somebody you know, with a few exceptions, like when I did the listen to the audio version of um, the first Chronicles of Narnia, and uh, you know, he was he was making little voices for the different characters, you know, if like it was one of the girls talking, you know, he'd speak with a higher voice, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. for the most part, well, you listen not to do that. Yeah, you listen to an audiobook and, and unless it's a done more like big finish, it's just mm-hmm. someone reading you the book. Mm-hmm. With the Dresden files, it's more like Game you are Arthur? listening to a conversation, wow. but you're only mm-hmm. getting it's like he's it's not like he's reading you a book it's like he sat down and just telling you a story about this really weird investigation he went on yeah yeah it's like harry dresden sitting down like at a bar and like oh you can't believe the week i've just had yes yes exactly (laughs) you're at max and he's he's telling you the tale yes now okay it takes a little bit to get used to that yes, style mm-hmm. of storytelling but but you get really immersed in it and i'll, I'll yeah. tell you one thing and I'll, I'll try to do it without spoilers because later um you know he he you know as the series progresses more and more characters become prominent and yeah and things yes. like that and later on and he'll do voices for um you know male female whatever he, he does it so well and they're all very distinct so later i actually listened to the audio version of some of the short story collections that, that jim butcher put out and some of them are written from certain female characters points of view and uh-huh. they have a female um narrator reading it and because of the character that it is I am, and then I hear the, the 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 lady reading it, and I'm like, no, 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 that's not that character's voice because I'm thinking of James Marsters' version of that female character <laughs> because he did the voice so well, and I'm like, in my mind, yeah. like, no, that is that character, that is her voice. Uh-huh. So you know, I agree if, with Chrissy. Yep. if they ever did a movie, I mean, I know they did a TV series, which was yeah, yeah. it was it was yeah, it was it was it, all right, <laughs> it was all right. Um, but you know. You know, if they ever did a proper movie or something, then I'd be like, James Marsters has to play everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just put him in a wig yeah. and just call it a day. Yeah. I, I wouldn't complain about that at Although all. Although, if you want an actual <laughs> Chauncey to play Chauncey <laughs> the Demon, I got one for you. <laughs> there's, there's a demon named Chauncey? Yes. 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 He has an upper class British accent. <laughs> Where's glasses? Oh. oh my gosh. Yeah. Dresden yeah. Files. If you haven't started it, you really should get on the yes. waiting list now. Get on yes. the waiting list now, yes. Or if you have Audible credits, yes. You know, here's a plug for our uh, our Audible yeah. discount. Um, yes. So Guess what I just our, did. Here's our link on our, <laughs> our website. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, you know, if you ever get to meet Jim Butcher, you know, when we have in-person things again, he's he's a delightful gentleman. Uh-huh. He's wonderful. So if you ever, if, you know, if he's ever at an author or, or, or a con near you, he's worth meeting. And he's worth following on um, Facebook and Instagram to yes. see see how his his pets, so Fenris and um, Brew. Yeah, Fenris. The we're only fostering him. He's going to be leaving soon, and that's been <laughs> how many years now? <laughs> that is what we call a foster fail. <laughs> just, yes. just keep him. Just yep. keep him. yes. I, I think Rue would be a little. Dis- I think Rue would be a little upset if Fenris <laughs> went somewhere else. <laughs> I imagine so. <sighs> mm-hmm. So yeah, that's like the biggest thing right now is I'm anticipating is moving up the wait list for the next. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Oh crap. Yeah, just later on, you're going to have to keep those books, or if you're listening to it audio, some of those you're going to have to keep keep it firmly in grip because there's some scenes where you kind of want to toss yeah. it in anger and then just come back to it later after you digest <laughs> what's happened yeah. just without, without getting any spoiler territory, right, Chrissy? Yes, right now, right now, it's a it's a, you know investigate you know the, a certain case of in this book and you know very procedural. Later on, that doesn't. That is not the case. But that's all. I'm- yeah, I get. I get the feeling yeah. that it's. It's uh, even just two bucks in. I'm like, we're leading up to something. Oh my goodness! Yes. Oh. Like, uh, but in like all of a sudden, all these things. mentions of his mother and uh, yeah. other oh, things. Yes. So. Yeah. Now, no. The good. The, the yeah. best thing about Dresden Files <laughs> is that the first book is is his worst because they get progressively yeah. better as you go down the series that is not a slight mm-hmm. against jim butcher but it's Ooh. just that you know and, and you know you ask any author that was his first book <laughs> yeah that was his first book mm-hmm. and you hope and you know talk uh, jared says this all the time about his he's like uh, you know i want to improve i want to get better so you know maybe because you know, i've heard people like oh stormfront eh, it wasn't my thing but i was like no no, no stick with it and it gets mm-hmm. it, it, like every each book just gets so much better, and uh, yeah, I, I, people say it's like about book three. It took me to book four to really be like because book four yeah. is, is like one of my favorites of the series, and I actually don't think I that's summer night, anything. correct? Yeah, summer night. I love summer night, um, and I haven't really disliked anything, but just up until then, I was kind of like, oh, I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure if this is for me. But Jared was like, No, 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 keep with it, and I I'm glad I did. So. Yeah. So yeah, any anyone out there who's starting out Dresden Files, and you're not sure, give it till book three or four, and whew, it's it's fun, yep. it's a ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I know. Like if I know it's a a start of a series, I like if I'm if I'm not really liking it, but I can see me liking it, I'll keep going. Like if I can see the potential, mm-hmm. so. So there's Dresden Files. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe maybe one day we'll do we'll do a podcast episode on it. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It might, yeah, it might let, be. Let like, me get more than two books well, in. Well, well, yes, yes. Yeah. Let me get in saying, like, an actual book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way, way down the road once we're. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's a, it'd be well, a complex topic, but we could do it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What well, what, what's evolved? Let's evolve. 17 and i think 17 or is he at 18 i want to say 17 and i thought he was thinking that and that doesn't include like like the short trips and stuff right yeah there there are two there are two anthologies of just short stories that he's collected because because he's written a bunch for you know different um you know paranormal type anthologies Mm -hmm. and so those are collected in those two there it's side jobs and briefcases yeah are the two because um, I think he said maybe when this whole series wraps up, it's going to be like 25 books total. Oof, oof. That's that last count I heard. It was 20. Damn it, something. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we beat it in a good way. Yes. yes. <laughs> 
I am a person, not a computer. <laughs> well, you need you need something you need something to read other than other than Michael Eisner's shenanigans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You need, you need you need you need a brain cleanse every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I feel like most series I've read, if with few exceptions, have been more than like five stories. <laughs> I like the well, series apparently. If they if they've got more stories to tell, then why the heck not? <laughs> yeah, that is true. All right. Well, moving on to <laughs> from that tangent. Uh, <laughs> so back to uh, more current things. What is, uh, I guess, beyond uh, <laughs> audiobooks? Um, what is everybody listening to? Oh, well, with mine. I mean, this is an audiobook. I kind of just split up the two main series I've been listening to. So, um, since I finished Dresden Files and was like, I kind of am enjoying this, you know, kind of paranormal supernatural kick. What else can I read? And so I was kind of, you know, tooling around trying to decide what I wanted to do. And uh, I stopped, well, um, I started looking into Alona Andrews. Now, Alona Andrews is actually a, a husband and wife duo, um, Alona and Andrew Gordon who write under this this name and they write sort of you know supernatural paranormal type of stuff and the and what and the series they've got several series going on but the one i kind of hit on mostly because overdrive had a copy of the first book available on audio um is the hidden legacy series and it's um takes place in our world but where um magic is inherited um within families and the and the magic families form houses and the houses are kind of what control society it's sort of like you know your your um you know dukes and duchesses those kinds of things but you know with magic and in more modern times so um so it follows this uh private investigator her name is nevada baylor and her dad's passed away she's running the family business her mom and grandma help out she's got a couple younger sisters and some cousins and you know they're kind of i mean she has magic but she's kept it on the down low uh and and they mostly do like um like you know spying on cheating spouses or you know getting getting proof that they you know, they cheated or uh you know bail jumpers or, or things like that it's like small time stuff but she ends up in some you know wrapped up in some really big uh this really big big situations and uh this guy connor rogan who's the head of house rogan and he's also called the scourge of mexico because of some terrible thing that he caused with his magic and he's he's uh, -oh. uh yeah he he ends up uh in the picture and eventually they're gonna get together it's like i'm like i'm waiting for the third book <laughs> um it's a five book series so and, and it's it's kind of fascinating because i i kind of enjoy it when you know i i can see it like i have a i have a story where i can recognize the the setting like you know it's, it's similar to a to a modern setting but there's just something different about it so there's a little twist to it so this one it's kind of, it you know it, it's fascinating that i can recognize certain things but you know it, but in this in this setting in this alternate history you know certain things happen differently so they'll re refer to these historical events that were very different than than what we would know because magic is is um is a thing so it's the hidden legacy series now the covers look really risque because whoever did the covers had no idea what the book was actually about <laughs> So you know you got shirtless, muscled dudes with you know, it, you know with the, with a lady in very provocative poses. There's a reason I got it on digital because <laughs> uh -huh. honestly, I I can't really take take the cover seriously. I mean, there is romance, but it's not everything. Uh, and like the first book is called Burn yeah. for Me, but in that in in the context of the story, it means something very different 
than the cover would suggest. I was gonna say yeah, because that that definitely sounds like it'd be some like really <laughs> yes, 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 yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, spontaneous combustion in this sense in the yes, book. Yes, yeah. yes, the villain, <laughs> the villain in that book is a mage who his 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 magic is fire. He loves to burn things down with impunity, and he's like one of the most dangerous mages. And Nevada gets set on him because his family contacted the the house that owns nevada's family's mortgage and and that family house montgomery is forcing nevada to to go after him they're expecting her to fail and when when she fails meaning she dies from from you know from from fighting this guy they can go back and say well we tried and they're not even close to putting their their best people on it because he doesn't want to lose his best people so he's just sending in this little small potatoes a private investigator after after this guy mm. so that that's 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 the deal but yeah she's the the reader on the audio is fantastic again you know someone you know, you just kind of get immersed into the story with the voices and the things they do so yeah so there's five books in the series and then i think there's a spin-off series involving one of nevada's sisters and i haven't i mean i haven't got there yet obviously um but so far i'm really enjoying it so first one's called burn for me the next one's called white hot third one is wildfire that's the one i'm waiting on right now so so far i'm enjoying it i mean as with anything it could completely go off the rails in the next book or so but i kind of don't think so i'm so i'm, I'm looking forward to, to that one sounds interesting yeah it, it is it's it's kind of in that you know dresden files you know real world meets meets fantasy magic sorts of things but in a different way so if you're if you've caught up with dresden files and need to scratch that that uh urban fantasy itch this one's a good one uh well when i'm not listening to audiobooks uh <laughs> uh for the most part i'm just trying to catch up on my immense backlog of podcasts <laughs> mm. as always i swear like as soon as what it seems like every time we do this i'm like i'm five years behind on every show i listen to uh so um well, recently though um i've been uh trying to get through the backlog that is the quantum leap podcast uh because i was grossly behind on them and they are now to the point where they are on the last season of quantum leap so oh, wow. uh, they're, he they're headed into the home stretch um with with their show um and the last season things get very interesting <laughs> there's some interesting <laughs> plots in the last season uh so uh but i'm I'm still grossly behind. Uh, I was so far behind that like the pandemic hadn't even started yet. And uh, uh, not everyone, Chris, uh, Matt was talking about going to Gallifrey One. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, that was the thing people used to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that shows you how far behind I am, but now I'm well into like middle of last year. <laughs> So I still got ways to go before I'm completely caught up. But hey, I guess that means that they're the 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 podcast won't end for me when it ends for them. <laughs> you're you are you're making progress. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean their their episodes are long, uh, but that's fine by me. I mean, some people are like, I don't like a podcast longer than like 20 minutes because I use it for my commute and I'm over here like two hours. Yeah. Dang, I love long Bring podcasts. It. Yeah. I, I get I get so I get kind of sad when a podcast episode is over because I'm like, well, now, now I, especially if I'm if I'm really enjoying it, I'm like, oh, come mm -hmm. on. I want more. Yeah. So, so can't we do that, that can't tangent a little bit? <laughs> that's a hint for for you listeners that we're you know we're going on to a couple hours now with mm -hmm. this one. Enjoy it. Hopefully. Yes. And if you still and if if even after listening to our shows, if that's not enough, go to our YouTube channel and listen to us play D and D. 
Yes. Because <laughs> yes. that's, that's another thing we do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm. If I if you if you see me with headphones in and I'm not looking at my screen, therefore I'm not watching ER or if it's Friday, not watching WandaVision. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, then odds are I'm either a listening to an audiobook or I'm listening to the Quantum Leap podcast. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's about all I got the brain cells for at the moment. Unless I'm in the mood for just plain old music. Mm-hmm. Especially if I'm at the mm-hmm. gym. Sometimes sometimes a podcast just doesn't do it for you to try to get through the workout, which is why I have mm-hmm. a workout playlist with things like Metallica on ah, it. Yes. So. Yes. You have Metallica on your playlist? Yeah, I know. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. Never would have guessed. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> what else? What else we got? I haven't really been listening to anything, really. Like, I'm also way behind on my podcast, but I haven't really started to try to catch up on any of them. Like, the only one I'm sort of caught up on is Traveling to Vortex, a brother podcast, but I'm still, like, I'm a couple of weeks behind on them. But other than that, I've just been listening to music. And nothing really specific, just random things like, oh, I'm in the mood for this. Mm. Or that. This or that, and a little bit of the other. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, I, think. I think we're all just like up to our eyeballs and earballs and books uh, yeah. <laughs> for the sound of things. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and yeah. then too, I'm kind of like Brittany, where I get indecisive. So, it's just like, uh, oh, I want this, I want that. Everybody working on yeah. anything? Well, um, I don't know if I can count this as working on, but uh, over Christmas, um, apparently not. <laughs> Podcast homework when we've got it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah but yeah, much. over over Christmas, uh, Jared and I got Nintendo Switches for as a nice. family. Hello. Family uh, uh, present, and uh, oh, there we, we, bought, go. we bought a couple of games. I ended up getting Animal Crossing after hearing so much about it. Yeah. Sister plays, and my niece got it, and I'm like, "Hey, this is something we can do together apart." Oh, <laughs> and okay. I'm kind of, I'm kind of in love with it. I I had a friend that texted me and she's like, you really should play Animal Crossing. I think you'd really like it. I'm like, I'm sure your life, I just would be consumed by it. I, yeah, I don't need another device to look at. I spend so (laughs) much time playing on my phone, the games on my phone as it is. Yeah. Right. I do. I don't need another device to keep track of. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I, I don't know. I've just kind of more, more or less it was, um, a, a re- well because i because my niece showed it to me um you know when we went to go visit him for christmas and you know we were getting you know we got we got the switches and we were just kind of thinking what other games do we want I'm like i want to try animal crossing because it's something i can do with her and my sister um not um the sister is not her mom by the way this is a different sister um i would so you know you can kind of you visit each other's islands but you know you just kind of you kind of just build this island. You build your house. You, mm-hmm. you plant flowers. You go fishing. You visit other islands. You build, you know, create things, craft things. It's very mellow, kind of zen, really. Yes. And it's just, it's just kind of fun. And you know, and you don't have to play with other people. Like if they come on and say, "I'm online," you can just, you know, say, "Okay, that's nice." Um, because you have to open your your airport gate to let people in, or you know, you actually have to go to them. Um, you know, you dig up, you dig up fossils, you, you build up a, a, a collection at the museum. Um, mm-hmm. there's just all kinds of little activities. And like the other day they had an event called Festival, which is basically Mardi Gras. And like all day I was collecting, <laughs> it was actually a day Blue I feathers. had off. Yeah. I was collecting the feathers. 
pictures for all the little and it's just it's fun it's cute it's wholesome and it can be silly and you know it's just it there it is there's no there's no plot line to it there's no i mean you you can find out you know there's there's a certain trick to to growing certain kinds of flowers uh, which is what one of the projects i'm working on so there it falls under working on i'm mm-hmm. working on my flower garden in animal crossing um and all your little neighbors are animals and they they all have their distinct personalities i've got one i've got sheldon the squirrel who's a who's a jock basically and he's always talking about you know you know working out and you know getting your your muscles and there's fuchsia the the pink fox and she's a she's a fashion fashionista and very you know suave and sophisticated uh, and i've got bettina this cute little mouse who like at one point i thought she thought i was ignoring her so i started giving her gifts so she wouldn't leave <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of become attached to these little digital creatures, <laughs> and it's it's there's it, I love it, Animal Crossing. Yeah, there's no there's no real pressure to it, but I love it. Mm-mm. It's a fun one. I haven't played. Oh, oh, go ahead, Brent. I haven't played in. I haven't played the this newer one, but I've like seen a lot of people play it, like on Twitch mm-hmm. and YouTube. I yeah. I had the one that was before it that was on the 3ds. And ah, I enjoy that okay. one, but I really want to get a Switch so I can get Animal Crossing because it, it look, that one looks so much like like you said, it's relaxing and zen. Yeah, like, yeah. You just kind of, I don't know. You just you just sit and you you play for however long you want to, and mm-hmm. then uh, then you go from there. Anyway. And it's not real stressful, so it's it's perfect for when you've, you know, you've, you've had a rough day or you just want to relax. And you can do whatever kind of little project you want. Yep. Yeah. Um, that sounds completely at my speed, but again, I just, that's not a rabbit hole I need to go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 can, it can take up a lot of time. It can be kind of a time suck if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, so you know, be judicious in in what you wanna what you wanna do. But there it is. And what I've been working on, I got this gift at Christmas, and I'm slowly taking my time. But I got the Lego little baby Grogu with <laughs> movable with movable arms, hands, ears, and head. Yeah. Um, bags upon bags and bags within bags. I've gotten like four, four or five out of the nine done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, it's like 1,073 pieces in the, the, uh, manual to put the, uh, the, the little guy together. It's probably about the size of a, 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 a monthly magazine. <laughs> yeah. So it's slow going, but I'm enjoying it. I'm taking my time. I don't want to get frustrated. And yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. you don't need to take it out on the kid. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and, and lose pieces to boot. That would not be good. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, no man are coming be after you unless you want. To be right. <laughs> but to be fair, it's not such a well. Maybe if it's revenge, but having men actually come over and hang out would be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, uh, what am I working on that I haven't already mentioned? Uh, <laughs> yeah, besides you know, podcasting homework, uh, you know, stuff I gotta watch for gold standard and and the like. Although I don't have a lot of gold standard homework this coming episode, which is kind of nice actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, but, uh, I, I, my sewing machine was in the shop right after New Year's getting a, a tune-up, um, but I haven't taken her out for a spin since I got her back, but she should be purring like a kitten now, so I guess I can get back <laughs> onto some of my sewing projects that I didn't get finished over the, the holiday break, um, so it's like 
Yeah, I want to start him on the off chance that conventions may be a thing later this year, but at the same time, it's like I don't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll or, see. Or you know, you could just do it for yourself. Yeah. That, yeah. that's, that's and then, like when do conventions do start like oh look i have all this and i don't even have to worry that about is it that is true too like look how prepared i am <laughs> that is that is very true so so uh, knowing you like what you have all this stuff and then the convention comes like oh new idea yeah uh -huh. well considering the uh you know the um the uh, Corella trailer. I might already have new ideas. So, <laughs> again, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the in the near future. So, yeah, I, I've got pending sewing projects that probably should be worked on that I'll get to eventually. So, uh, you know, one of those things that are a work in progress. I'm always working on something cosplay related. <laughs> How's that? There you go. <laughs> I still say one of these days, one convention, you just need to do like a whole like mashup of cosplays. Yeah. Like just one big mashup. <laughs> that seems like that's my life most of the time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've got quite the collection. I've got lots of fandoms covered. Yep. One day you'll have just this big old wardrobe saying, look at everything that I have dressed up as. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like do a little tour of it. Yeah. Here's my gallery. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really working on anything, like, just, like, working on, I can't really say shrinking my to read, to watch, whatever list, because of, of the growing. But yeah, don't, yeah, don't ever, don't ever think, <laughs> yeah, don't ever think you will ever finish up your to be read watch list, because you're yeah. always going to add like, to it. Mm -hmm. say cross out one add like five mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> that is life anyway. yep especially when we do the show and we suddenly get suggestions for 12 more things so right it's like what, what else do you want to do um oh that okay like, um sleep ah, who needs that yeah, that's for right. weak people <laughs> yes sleep for the week <laughs> I'm just working breed. on like mobile games I have. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I always end up reading in the middle of the night when the kids are awake. It's like, well, I have to be awake with you, so might as well read something on my phone. Oh yeah, I'm like I'm like I start reading something. Like I'd say I oh well, I probably won't just read to like ten or eleven. Look at the time on my phone. It's two o'clock in the morning. Like, <laughs> oh. I really need to go to bed. Mm -hmm. Ten, ten chapters later. Uh -huh. exactly. Is that the sun I see? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, whoops. Wow. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway. So, anything else? Nope. I don't okay. Think so. I don't think I need anything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have we have we sufficiently filled up your your to do list, people? Well, yep. hopefully we have. <laughs> and uh, if any of our listeners want to chime in on what they've been doing, or reading, or whatever it is you are doing, uh, you can send in your feedback. And tell and give us more suggestions because heaven knows we could use them. All um, right. Um, our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can go to our website, which is the fiveishfangirls.com, and find links to our social media fa Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and leave comments. We read those out as feedback on the show quite a bit. 
and um if you want to help support the show we have patreon we have an amazon store we have our aforementioned audible link which gives us a little bit of a uh, a referral bonus for uh, when you sign up using our link and you get uh, and you get some free audiobooks when you sign up so you it's everybody wins it's amazing and you can probably you can get on reading or listening to that Dresden Files backlog that you all have because you all have assignments now to listen to mm-hmm. Dresden Files. <laughs> I'm making you do it. <laughs> you now have homework. <laughs> <children. laughs> the good anyway. thing I always set my audible credit on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway all joking aside we appreciate your support we appreciate you guys listening and sending feedback and and any in any way that you support the show because it's just it's just good to know people are out there listening and we're glad that that you enjoy what we're doing so we'll continue to do it and thank you thank you all thank you again and hope you all are staying well and safe and sane in wherever you are where mm-hmm. if you every crazy thing that's going on in this world and you don't yep. need to mm-hmm. enumerate them because you're living through it yeah yep especially any listeners we have that got really hit last week especially the ones in texas Ooh, yeah. yes, Ooh, yeah. yes. If, you're in, if you're in texas bundle up please yep uh-huh. yeah. stay safe mm-hmm. yeah. although i i have to say i have to say i'm proud of you guys uh, no power no water and and yet nobody is a uh, no no uh Riding, looting, or any of that crazy stuff that it's usually happens. Yes. Yeah. When, mm-hmm. when these big storms, disasters happen. So, Texas, good on you. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for taking care of each other because that's what it's all about. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, with that, I guess we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Troy saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Be safe, everybody. to the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.